Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R6515. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R6515. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video will be specifically dedicated to memory. Uh, so what we're gonna do in this video as a whole is we're gonna go over the different sizes, the different speeds. We're gonna tell you the different types of RAM. We're gonna show you how to physically install them. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and hop in. What are the different speeds that are accepted with the 6515? You have the 2666, the 2933, and the 3200 and do note the max speed that you will get will depend on which CPU you have. It will take uh, Rome and it will take Milan. So depending on which one you have and what your CPU is spec'd out to it will depend on the max CPU you can get. And if you load up all the uh, channels completely and fill it up, it can also clock down a little bit more. So just know going in that uh, the, the speed that's on your module might actually go down a little bit depending on how you configure it. And if you have any questions, you can just message our sales team and we can definitely help you with that to understand what the true max speed is for your configuration. Now, what are the different types of sizes? Well, you can go as low as a 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or all the way up to 128 gig, but there's a key with 128 gig, and that brings us to what type of RAM is accepted. So there's two types of DIMMs. You have ECC registered, which is known as an RDIM, and you have load reduced, which is known as an LR DIMM. With ECC registered, you can max out at one terabyte using 1664 gigs at 3200 speed, but with LR DIMMs, you can get that 128 gigabyte DIMM that we were talking about and put in two terabytes using 1628 gigabyte DIMMs, again at 3200 speed. So that's the advantage to LR DIMMs over RDIMs is more scalability. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the sizes, the types, let's show you how to physically install them. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on, so we are safe to load our RAM in. So all we're gonna need is our tray of RAM. No tools will be needed. Uh, one of the things I wanna point out first is that there is only one CPU, as you might've uh, seen in our CPU video to open this series, and there are 16 DIMM slots for the CPU, which means there are eight memory channels and two DIMMs per channel. And this is actually really important information because the channels is what tells you or what guides you on how to load your modules. If you're just maxing it out and you're putting in 16 DIMMs, really doesn't matter. You just can install them any way you want. But it's really key if you're only putting in, let's just say, four DIMMs or eight DIMMs, where do you install them? Um, and that's what we're going to show you in this video right now. And then we're going to show you some tips along the way. So the first thing I want to point out here is uh, the air baffle, which we're going to need to remove in a second to access the back part of the DIMMs. The air baffle, uh, it might be hard to see on camera, but it's labeled and it shows you all the DIMM slots, which is a, a guide to show you exactly how to install them. And technically back here on the uh, the PCB board, the uh, motherboard itself, it's gonna show the, uh, the DIMM slots as well. So it's labeled twice, but some people I know will like to just lift the air baffle and put it right here so that it's a helpful guide for them. Um, so that's just a thought in case you're not really sure which ones to go with. So, all right, um, the next thing that I wanted to point out, I'm gonna close all these actually really Really quick so that it can help uh, identify which ones to go with. So the uh, configuration is slightly strange. Um, you're going to start over here in the white DIMM slot. And in this section, I want to point out about the channels is that the white DIMM slot is the first slot in the channel and the black DIMM slot is the second slot in the channel. So you'll actually want to fill up all the white DIMM slots before you fill up any of the black DIMM slots. And the reason being is you want to have a nice even distribution across all of your memory channels. So there's no point in say putting two DIMMs right here and then not having a DIMM over here because you're just going to overload one channel and get no work out of this channel right? So you just want to have a nice even distribution across all of your channels. So if we're putting in uh, memory and, and we're not maxing it out, we're going to start on channel one right here. That's A1. And then come over to the next white dim slot and that's A2. And this is the key that I wanted to point out. A lot of times this would be A3, but it actually swings all the way over here. And this is A3. And then this is A4. And then you're going to jump back over here. And this is A5. A6, swing back over here, A7, A8. So that would be the exact order. So if you're putting in two, it'd be one, two. If you're putting in four, one, two, three, four. If you're putting in six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then eight would be all eight. And of course, if you're maxing out, then you just fill all 16 of them up, but that is how you would install them. So now we're gonna show you actually how to physically put them in. Um, and I got a few tips I wanted to show you along the way. So first thing, I like to pop open all my 
tabs just makes it a little bit easier when I go to install them, uh, not fumbling around and just have everything ready to go for me. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is just get all these ready. And the next thing that I wanted to point out so we're gonna be installing, uh, these are 64 gig uh, LR dims. So the ne next thing I wanna point out is right here, there's this notch in the middle of your leads. And actually that's the, the problem with it is it's not in the middle, it's not perfectly centered, it's just slightly off. And that's really important because this notch, which is known as a key, needs to be lined up perfectly with your dim slot. So there's a, a little tab right in the middle, a uh, little notch I should say that sticks up, um, that if you have this lined the wrong way, you could potentially damage your leads leads or damage the the mo or excuse me the um, the slot itself and if you've damaged the slot then you might have to replace the motherboard and that's not something that you want to run into so it's one of the things I always point out to people is just make sure you line it up properly uh, with where the key goes and the other thing that I wanted to point out is once you set it in you might think that it's in but it's not fully in you want to hear these two clicks that was actually really quiet but you'll normally hear two clicks and those two clicks will let you know that the module that the, uh, the tabs have grabbed the side of the module and pulled it down so that you have a nice firm connection. And when you look at the module itself, you will not see any of the gold, gold leads in there uh, sticking out of the, um, of the, the tab itself or out of the uh, slot itself, I should say. So uh, that's the first one we're gonna do. And then we're just gonna come over here and this will be the second one. And let's make sure we have everything lined up. And then again, just make sure you come back over here and it does rotate as far as which way the key is. So you come over here and this is gonna be the third one. And this is going to be the fourth one. And then swing back over here and again, switch it around. This is gonna be the fifth one, the sixth one, your seventh one, and your eighth one. And now I'm gonna make sure that they're all fully in. And the newer systems, the uh, the clicks definitely aren't as loud and the older systems, the clicks are pretty loud, um, but you can still see that your tabs are going all the way up. And so that's the other thing I say is at the end, you wanna make sure that your tabs aren't sticking out. Cause even if it's just out just a little bit, that's enough that the module will not be registered. It won't even see it. And sometimes people think that they have a bad dim or that uh, they have two bad dims cause it can, can even throw off a whole channel. And we always tell people to rotate your dims around. And the reason we say to rotate your dims around is really because it's probably one of them is not fully seated. It's the most common user error that we see. It uh, happens all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward right now and we're gonna fill the rest of these up. All right, so we have just finished loading up one terabyte of 64 gig load reduce modules into our R6515. This is gonna be a great boost to the overall performance. Uh, this is a great box for performance as well. I love the AMD Epic procs that go in here. I think this is a, a great machine as a whole. And if this is a machine that you use in your data center, we do stock a ton of these, uh, including the 10 bay NVMe chassis. So if you're looking for any servers, please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. And of course, we stock a lot of other stuff outside of the 6515, uh, Dell, HPE, Supermicro, IBM, and so forth. And we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home lab's business. And if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys.